Okay, all of your hands should be up. Why aren't your guys' hands up? Okay, it got too hard for you? Or you don't want to be a champion? <laughs> all right, so if you follow Mayhem Bergner Strength, you'll notice that I do a lot of barbell prep work before we get into the actual snatching or the actual clean and jerking. So that's kind of what we're gonna do today. We're gonna start off with some barbell prep for the snatch. I like to break down the movement of the snatch, work on different things that I tend to see people making mistakes with. That way their body has kind of done the skills and drills before they actually get into snatching. It's, the snatch is really hard. So it's hard for us to just pick up a barbell and start snatching. We got to teach our body how to move properly. We got to take the time to break it down into pieces so that by the time it's time to snatch, your body's like, okay, I know what to do and now I can just move, okay? So the complex that we're gonna start off with today is pause, tempo, snatch, deadlift. So these are gonna be five different positions that you hit when you're pulling from the ground. You definitely can make or break a lift with your pull off of the floor. So drilling the positions and making sure that you're very comfortable and familiar with proper positions and how your body feels and how your feet feel against the ground is super important as an Olympic weightlifter so, and as a CrossFitter. Sometimes we get like so excited and we just want to walk up to the bar and grip and rip, which is great. It's super fun. It's super exciting, but we need to make sure that our positions are dialed and that we can trust our positions. So doing some pause tempo deadlifts, which I'll demonstrate in a second, are a great tool for feeling those positions. Then you're gonna do a power snatch into an overhead squat. So how many of you guys, when you power snatch heavy, your feet go out super wide? Raise your hand. It's okay, you're still a good person, okay? But technically, when you land, Luke's like, I'm gonna keep my hand up. When you land in a power snatch, if it's done well, you should be able to go straight down into your squat. Okay, so we're gonna power snatch, hold for a second, and then go down into your overhead squat. That's gonna force you to stay focused in to your footwork and making sure that your footwork is dialed in. Then we're gonna do snatch drop. So you're gonna do a power snatch overhead squat and then you're gonna bring the bar on your back, okay? And we're gonna practice driving our bodies hard down into our overhead squats, okay? A lot of people think when they're doing a squat snatch that it's a jump, drop, and then pray that the bar ends up over their head. You have to put yourself into position. You have to be very aggressive when you're driving your body down into your overhead squat. The snatch drop is a great drill for that, okay? It's also great for people who have commitment issues and don't like getting underneath the bar, okay? So who has commitment issues in their relationships? <laughs> okay, there's a direct correlation here. And then last, we're gonna do sots presses because they're just really good for you as a person. So you're gonna do your snatch drop on your third one. You're gonna stay down there and you're gonna press down in your overhead squat position and then you're gonna stand, okay? So here's what this complex is gonna look like. This super long complex is gonna look like as a whole. You're gonna do one deadlift pausing one inch off of the ground. Below the knee, above the knee, mid thigh, and then your power position. Okay, that power position where you feel like you can really drive and jump hard against the ground. Then you're gonna bring it to the ground and you're gonna do a power snatch, making sure that you hit all those positions that we just went through. You're gonna pause for a second and you're gonna overhead squat. Bring it down, power snatch, hold, overhead squat. And then you'll do that one more time. On that last one, bring it on your back, snatch drop. So this is you don't, no dip and drive at all. 
all you get is a punch down into your overhead squat. Punch, and then once you're down there, you'll do your sats press. Okay, so let's all go through it together, and then we'll break up into groups. So get into your snatch grip. If you're Jen, you're gonna make sure you have your hook grip. Jen just told me today that she doesn't hook grip and now I'm questioning who she is as a person. Okay? Everyone show me your hook grip. Good. All right. Put those bars over your head really quick. Anytime these bars are over your head, I want to see your armpits forward. Crease of the elbow towards the ceiling reaching up towards the ceiling and then trying to bend that bar. So anybody whose crease of the elbow is forward here, this is called internal rotation. We do not want this. This is a very weak position. We want external rotation with internal torque, meaning turning on all of those surrounding muscles in your overhead squat. And you want to make sure that you're stacked underneath this bar. Your body is the foundation underneath this bar. So if the bar is a little bit out in front, do I have much support underneath the weight? No. If the bar is all the way back here, do I have much support? No. I want to feel my body directly underneath that bar. So have some awareness of where that bar is in space. Okay, so show me those overhead positions. External rotation, crease of the elbow towards the ceiling. Reach up, break the bar. Feel how active that is. And bring it down. Okay, so let's get set in our starting position. In this position, you wanna feel balance on your feet. Sit super far back on your heels. You don't want to be here. Sit forward on your toes. You don't want to be here. Find that balance point with your feet. Roll your shoulders up, back, and down. That engages your lats. All right, let's go one inch off the ground. Good, back angle should stay the same. Push your feet through the ground. Below the knee. Eyes straight ahead. Above the knee, stay over that bar. This is usually the position where people start to open up. Don't do that. Okay, stay over. Stay over to mid thigh. Good. Very good. Feel the balance on your feet. All right, power position. So you want to feel like your legs are underneath you. You want to feel strong through that upper body. You want to feel like you can jump super hard against the ground from here. And stand. Good. All right, so we're going to go down to the ground and we're going to power snatch and we're going to hold for a second and then I'll tell you to squat. Ready? Down to the ground. Try to stay over the bar all the way till that mid thigh and snatch. Show me the armpits. Squat. Stand. Good. Bring it down to the ground. Stay over to mid thigh. Push those feet through the ground and snatch. Good. Squat. Nice. One more. Down to the floor. Squeeze those lats. Let me see your toes on the ground. All right, and snatch. Nice. Squat. Put the bar on your back. All right, move your feet in right under your hips. We're going to do snatch drops. So your elbows are going to be right underneath your wrists. We're going to see how fast you can be, how aggressive you can be, punching your body down into your overhead squat. Okay, these are snatch drops. I don't want to see any 
dip at all. Just punch down. Stand by. Punch. Woo! Stay down there. Stay down there. Show me those armpits. Try to get that chest vertical. Good. Stand. Bar on back. Your legs should be super fresh right now. Okay? Ready? Stand by. Punch. Good. Show me the armpits. Fight for that position down there. Stand. One more. A lot of people think that they're really immobile down in their overhead squat, so they kind of just surrender to that. Even if you're immobile, fight to hold those positions. Make your upper back work. One more snatch drop. Ready? Punch. Good. All right, stay down there. Bring the bar on your back, elbows right under your wrists, and press. Down. Press. Eyes straight ahead. Down. Press. Isn't this fun? And stand. Good job, you guys. Okay? So what you guys are going to do is you're going to grab an empty barbell and probably get in like teams of two or three. Try to find people that lift generally around the same weight as you. This initial complex is done with very light weight. We're being mindful here. We're not trying to go for load. All right, so keep it light. Do 15 pound bar, empty bar. You're gonna do three sets of this. And then I'll explain the next portion. Okay? Ready, break. Shut. That's why I like All first. right, so because you're a little bit taller, I'm gonna start with your hips a tiny bit higher. Right there, perfect, okay? And you're gonna make sure your full foot's pushing through the ground and you're not sitting too far back on your heels here. Okay, okay so it's good when your shins come forward a little bit in the start. Exactly. All right, push to one inch off the ground. Good. Keep your, don't try to drive your knees out. Yeah, see how that brings your legs underneath you? That's much better to be able to push through the floor. I'm gonna keep talking while you hold this okay, position. Yep, yep, I'm doing great. I'm <laughs> All right, below the knee. Good, don't drive those yep, knees out. Yep, there yep. you go. That's just gonna make better contact with your feet. Okay. All right, above the knee. Good. Squeeze here for me. There you go. Mid thigh. Come up a little bit higher, right there. And now stay over a little bit more. See how that keeps the loading in your hamstrings. Yep, if you came forward a little bit, now you've unloaded that, right? So we wanna keep the tension here. Now we can unload and get to the hips. Beautiful, feel how, exactly, feel how strong here, strong here, and then stand. Good, and now you can go from the floor. Keep those big toe on the ground, better start position, good. Beautiful, good, fight to hold that though. You're a little bit here, just fight it a little bit more. Open up, yes. Exactly. So that's going to make this work, uh -huh. right? So if you go back to that internal rotation, that's all here. Uh -huh. We don't want to load here. We want to load everything back here. That's going to be way more structurally sound. Okay. So now get to that position right away on this next one. Yes. Very good. So much better. Good. If you start with your elbows right under you, it'll be better to get into that position. Yes. Awesome. Yep. Now sit. Sit. There you go. Wow. Look at that depth. That's where we need to get strong because that's where you're going to receive your one rep max snatch, yep. right? Not in that like little bit higher, little more active position. Your one rep max snatch is gonna be ass to grass down in a deep squat, okay? All right, who's next? Who wants to go next after that? <laughs> yes. So every time I power snatch without fail, I fall on my ass. So like, what do you think could like help that? So usually it's a disconnection from your feet. Okay, so whenever you feel like you fall on your ass, it's because there's a lack of balance, right? Yeah. 
our feet are our source of balance. So if I think about jumping hard and landing strong, I'm probably gonna be more balanced. But if I'm like so worried about what my body is doing and what the bar is doing, I'm probably completely disconnected from my feet and then I'll have a greater chance of falling over. So think jump hard, land hard, that's gonna create your speed when you jump hard and then your stability when you land hard. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's see it. And don't call me ma'am because it makes me feel really old. Okay. And I'm very young. Sorry, I'm from Texas. It's a habit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, so snatch first. So we want to, that a girl. And I think you were going a little bit too wide. So let's bring your hands into here. It, not that much. Like, let's go in between those two lines. Your index finger in between those two lines. Like right there? Yeah. Little bit wider. There you go. Let me see what that looks like overhead. Okay, you could go a tiny bit wider. Right there. Now, bring it down. Oh, in front of you. And make sure your hands are even. So see how this one's a little bit wider, that one's a little bit narrower. So make them the same. Perfect. Those are like the little tedious attention to details that are very important when you're Olympic weightlifting. People just think, oh, I'll grab the bar anyhow or whatever. But if you have attention to detail, it's going to make consistency in the rest of your lift. Okay? All right, bring those feet in a little bit for me. The reason is, is we want to feel powerful in this position. So if we're really wide, I'm not going to be able to jump hard from here. I want to have my feet under me. That's where I'm going to be more powerful when I go to drive against the ground. Okay, go ahead and get in your start. Good, bring your butt up for me. A little bit more and then bring your shoulders over. Let the bar come down. There you go. Squeeze right here. Perfect. All right, go one inch. Good. Below the knee. Feel your balance here. Above the knee. Feel your balance. Good. Mid thigh. Feel your balance. That's beautiful. Very good. Now, let's get our hips underneath us and get it into the hip crease. Feel balance on your feet here. Get it all the way up here for me. Yes. That's where we want it to be. Okay? And stand. All right. Let's go ahead and go into a power snatch from the floor. Hit those same positions. If it has to be slow, that's fine. Tight. Okay, so pause there, right? Because if your problem is that lack of balance, find your balance. Pause there, feel it, and then I want you to go into your overhead squat, okay? That was a great power snatch. Balance. Find it. Stay there. I didn't tell you to stand. Stay. Find your balance. Find it, don't look down. Good girl, now squat, nice and slow. And stand. That was awesome, that was awesome. See how much more connected you are to your feet and how they feel against the ground? That's your source of balance. That was a great fight, give me one more. Keep fighting for that, okay? Bring those feet underneath you a little bit more. We want power, yes. Nice and slow to mid thigh. Oh, good job. Jump. Land hard. That's already better. Now fight for this overhead squat. Eyes, eyes, eyes. And stand. Look at how much better that is already. Good girl. That's what you need to work on. Doing slow tempo overhead squats, feeling connected to your feet making your legs work in your squat and as you're standing, okay? Nice work, good job. Where should your eyes be? Don't move at all, don't you dare move, okay? Look at his feet. No, don't move, I saw you trying to correct. See how everything is on the outside of his feet right now? Even your shoes are like molding to that, right? That's a problem for us. So get your full foot on the ground. Whoa, now your shoes look normal. Right? And that gets those strong legs underneath you. Go back to the outside of your feet. We don't want to be here. See how much power you've just lost now? You've lost all of this power. Okay, we got to get your foot 
pushing through the ground, that's your source of power right there. Okay, now get to your power position. Open up that chest a little bit, big proud chest. There you go, do you feel your full fit against the ground? Whoa. Honestly, I used to have the same problem. It's just gonna be a change of habit there. Getting used to being, okay, knees out, knees out. We don't want that. I lose connection with the floor. Get my legs underneath me and stand. Okay? Do that one more time. Just because holding those positions is super easy, so it's fine. Eyes. Yes. Okay, stop. How do your feet feel against the ground? How's the balance? Are you sitting behind the bar? Are you sitting over the bar directly? I'm trying to stay over it. Perfect. Above the knee. Find your balance. Where do you think you're having a tendency to shift? Back a little bit, right? Okay. Yeah, that's where you want to be. Mid thigh, stay there with the balance. Yes. Power position and stand and put it down for a second. So did you guys see those little shifts? That makes the biggest difference in the world. Obviously your weight feels, your body feels weight in front of you, right? So it's like, oh my gosh, this is in front of me, I gotta sit back. And so we sit all the way back on our heels when it's only 75, how much is that? 65 pounds. However much weight you have in front of you is how much you need to sit back on your heels. So if I only have 75 pounds in front, 65, I'm really good at math. That's why I teach weightlifting, okay? If I only have 65 pounds in front of me, how much do you think you have to shift back to your heels? 65 pounds, not much. Exactly, not much. So I don't wanna see this drastic shifting in your weight. I wanna see your feet continually pushing straight down and your body staying directly above the bar. Not sitting behind, not sitting in front, but directly above the bar through all those positions. Okay, now do your power snatch. Is everyone done with their three sets? Stop. Is that where you started in your starting position? No, I'll answer for you. Your butt was too high. Let your shins come forward. Where are your eyes supposed to be? See that shift in his weight? That was way better. Now power snatch. Much better. Squat. Beautiful. Very, very nice. One more. Yeah, that's okay. Good. One more. I say that a lot. One more and I really mean like three more. Jump and land. I loved that one. Absolutely beautiful. Good job. Good. Sit a little deeper. There. We got to get strong there. Beautiful. All right, so is everyone done with that first portion? Yes, no, maybe so? Good. All right, guys, bring it in really quick. Do I have any questions on that first part? Awesome, you guys totally understand it. Super simple, complex, right? Okay, next we're going into cycled squat snatches, which seems a little bit weird to do before you snatch for a one rep max, right? I love cycled squat snatches because it helps you establish balance through your feet as you're lifting. So if you're spending a lot of time shifting back and forth from your toes to your heels and there's a lot of that rocking going on as you're lifting, it's going to be really hard to stay balanced on your feet and balanced throughout the whole lift. So this is going to be really light. You're just going to do three sets of three touch and go squat snatches. And your goal as you're doing this is to feel your feet pushing straight through the ground through each set. I don't wanna see you guys falling forward. I don't wanna see you guys falling backwards. I wanna see full feet pushing through the ground, staying balanced with the bar. 
It's not some battle between you and the bar throughout the lift. You're working with the bar, using the resistance of the barbell to move your body around it. Does that make sense? Do I have any questions on this next portion? Once you guys get your three sets of three cycled squat snatches in, you guys are gonna be going right into a heavy single for the day. That could be your 65%, okay? I don't care what the number is. I'm gonna be walking around helping you guys out. I just want you guys to get to a weight where your flaws start to be exposed a little bit, okay? And then if it doesn't feel great, just stop it that way and keep repeating that, that weight a couple of times. If it feels really good, keep going up. All right, so we'll take about probably 25 minutes or so to get this and this done. Got it? All right, break. What are we doing now? The cycle squat snatches? Yeah. Okay. What is the cycle? It just means unbroken. Okay. Or touch and go. Good. Stay tight. Good. Get your air before you start. Don't breathe in as you're lifting off the ground. Okay. Breathe in, brace, go. Tight. Good, and down. Okay, trust your overhead squat. Your overhead squat position is really good. It's really efficient. But right now what you're doing is you're receiving it and you're like, oh shoot, I don't feel super comfortable. So okay, now I'm going down and now I'm standing. Try to make it a little bit more fluid as you're doing it. Trust that overhead squat position. Don't resist it and like tense up and, and be tight as you're going down into your squat. Okay? All right, let's see it. Everything else looked awesome. Really good. Good. Don't let your scoop be super excessive and noticeable, okay? The scoop happens because you jump. It's not something that you force to happen. It just happens because you're jumping the bar through a range of motion, okay? So get to mid thigh and jump. That's okay. Jump and land, jump and land. That was much better. That overhead squat position is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I wanna see you go like with more weight, then I'll kind of know what goes wrong. But right there, that movement looks beautiful. I like it. Good job. All wrong. Everything was wrong about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you look straight at me. <laughs> I knew I was in trouble when you came over here. Okay, so I really like the fluidity of it. There needs to be a balance between having it be fluid but not having it be lazy and loose. Right, but we don't want to be like so tight and so set that it's too like mechanical and we're kind of resisting the movement. So you're a little bit more on the side of like, okay, it looks really fluid, but it's kind of like yanking you around right now, right? So squeeze your upper back a little bit. Let the bar move how it's moving, but just be like a little bit more precise with your movement, okay? Let's see it. You should be really nervous. Yeah, just like a better person in general, just be that.
Okay, so not bad at all. So you're the typical, I'm gonna hit it off of my hip. So hard. Right, so hard. So hard. And that to you feels good. Like, okay, I got it to my hips, that's great. That's all that matters. You should be hitting the hips because you're jumping hard. Okay. Not, don't just hit the hips to hit the hips because that's not really doing anything. It's, when we make contact, it makes the bar hit off of something, but the contact should be this contact up. Yeah. The bar is, tr when we contact, we're basically transferring energy from our jump into the bar, into lifting that bar. So if I just hit and go, all I'm really doing is just bringing the bar out okay. and then I'm having to work really hard to sneak underneath it. Yep. So if you want to contact the hips, that's fine. I like that sensation too. Just make sure that you're contacting up yep. and that the reason that's happening is because you're jumping, not just because you're hitting it off your hips. Okay. okay? All right, so you go and what are you focusing on? Precise. Precise. Be crisp and clean. Good. Nice and easy. It's only 75 pounds. Good. Move with the bar. Feel your feet. So much better. That last one was beautiful. And when you can bring it back to your feet, and how your feet feel against the ground, it automatically stabilizes you. Whenever we're trying to be fluid and we're not like focusing on our feet, I'm probably gonna land a little bit forward and now I feel like I'm all over the place. So use your feet to stabilize you, okay? All right, let's see it. Jump and brush. Move your feet more. Jump and land. Okay, okay jump and land. Better, jump and land. Yeah, that's better, good. So a good cue for you would be, I wanna hear your feet. I wanna hear your feet more than I hear the contact. And that's gonna help you use your legs more than your hips, okay? Good job, guys. Let's see it. What are we working with here? Okay, let's see it. Start with your butt a little bit higher. Yes, I like that better. Squeeze your upper back. Yes, good. So you have like a real, real rich froning, which is fine because you're pulling it into position. But as soon as I told you to squeeze your upper back, it almost elongated your arms a little bit more. So this is fine as long as we're also engaged through our upper back. But when I'm doing this and my shoulders are forward, it's gonna put the weight a little bit too far out in front of me. But if I do this and I squeeze, it balances me on my feet and now I'm more balanced in my receive too. So you just need to squeeze everything back here. Make this work so that when your, your shoulder, yeah, we don't wanna be loaded like this and then we compensate by doing this. We want this and this. Now I'm in a much more powerful position than you were before. And I'm okay with this. This is not, it's not super bad. I just want to see that engagement, okay? We're gonna go fix this guy. Hi. Hi. How do you feel about that one? I think so, good. You think it's okay? Yeah. So what I'm you Show me. okay yeah, you are you are a You go first and then I'll tell you what I see. Okay, so give me two because I know you just went. So give me two cycled squat snatches. Two? Yeah. So this is a very typical thing that we see. When you bring the bar up to here, and then you kind of hit and go. We call that a hitch. And a hitch okay. is when someone's trying to be so explosive that they feel like they have to like drive it off of their body in order to be explosive. 
Where do you think the explosiveness should come from? What part of our body? What part of our body is really? This. Exactly. Yeah. So that just means what? Jumping. Right there, what you're doing is you're just jumping, yeah. right? So when you get to this position, instead of doing this to create power, you need to get to this position and jump to create power. So what I'm gonna have you do is you're gonna deadlift it up to right here. And when I say jump, all you're gonna do is jump and shrug. Don't even snatch. Come here, pause, jump and shrug. And then we'll snatch, okay? So pause right here. So do it again. Do it with me. Bring, come down to the bar. Uh, butt up a little bit. Eyes here. Okay, deadlift up to mid thigh. Eyes here. A little bit higher. Stop. Jump. Good. Again. Down. Up to mid thigh. Give me your eyes right here. Jump. Good. Bring it down. Okay, you're gonna snatch this time. Do it the same way. Jump. Good, now snatch it. Snatch. So much better, so much better. And that's a very hard habit to break. Okay, that hitching is very hard to break. So that's what you need to do every time you snatch. You need to pause, jump and shrug. Pause, jump and shrug, and then snatch. And feel that sensation of jumping. Oh, yeah. Okay? Yeah, thank you. All right, good nice. job. How's it going over here? Good, good, good. You feel good about it? Yeah. Okay, let me see. Okay. Not bad at all. What I'm seeing when you're pulling off of the ground is you're losing your legs, which right. is very, very common. So people pull off of the ground and then they kind of let this happen, where the weight shifts back to their heels and my legs are like this. And they're so far behind me that now when I go to jump, it's almost like I do this. And you're not really moving your feet, you're just kind of coming up and coming back down. So I want you to feel like your legs stay underneath you. You can get your knees back out of the way by just standing. I don't have to get the knees out of the way by excessively sweeping back and coming forward. I keep my legs underneath me and I jump and land with full feet. I want to see your feet move from jumping to landing. Okay, let's try it again. So keep those legs underneath you. Better. Now jump the bar up. So that was so much better with your feet, but when you did it, you just jumped your feet up and you didn't jump the bar up. So do both. That was so much better. Way to listen. Keep your legs under you. Oh yeah. Feel how much more explosive that is? And you can hear the explosiveness too with your feet. Good job. Right. That was awesome. Thank you. Hi. How's it going over here? Okay, I can help you. <laughs> Stop. We want that bar here. Now it doesn't have to drag up against your legs, but up a little bit. But up a little bit right there. See how the bar is away from you though. Bring it into you. There. Squeeze here. Okay, go. Good. More movement of your feet. Okay? So right now your feet started here and then they stayed here. So when you go down, you don't have any space to like get your hips in between your heels. And that's why your chest is forward and your shoulders are like this. I have to create space for my hips to get down in between my heels so that my chest can be as vertical as possible. So move those feet out so that I can be in a better position to receive the bar, okay? Yes. Uh, my watch, I mean, I watch, I watch. That's what I want. 
Jump and land. That was better, much better. Do one more, and when you jump like that, I want you to brush it up off of your hips. Don't try to make a lot of contact with it. The contact's gonna happen if you jump hard. So think just light brush up off of the hips, okay? Yeah. Give me that good jump and land. But up a little bit, right there. Jump and land. Yeah, that was way better. Good job. Much better. That's what we're after, is that efficiency. If I try to contact hard, now it's like I'm manipulating this bar in a bunch of different ways. But if I just jump and brush, it's a way more fluid motion. Okay, good job. You. You're welcome. I don't know where we are on time. Okay. Oh, we got an early arm bender over here. Okay. <laughs> so, why do you think people bend their arms too soon? <laughs> no, you need less strength. Right, so if I'm trying to pull the bar up with my arms, it probably means I'm trying to muscle that bar over your head. So you're using this little bit of piece of your body here okay. instead of using all of that to generate power. Okay. Which one do you think is gonna be more explosive, using oh. all of this or just using this right here? All the body. Right, so I wanna make sure that I roll my shoulders up, back, and down so that my arms can be loose and this can start to work to generate power into my arms. Okay. Right, so it's core to extremity. It's body to arms rather than coming here and now my arms are coming into play. Now I'm trying to, to it's too restrictive, okay. right? So go ahead and get set. Squeeze your upper back. Yes. Jump to arms. Jump to arms. Yeah! That was way better! Did you feel how much faster that was? Yeah. Wow! It like and whipped. I don't, I, I don't feel my arms work. at all. Okay. Right? So it's that weightless feeling that you get. And the only way you can get that is if you squeeze those lats and you let your body work. Okay. That was so much better. Good Thank job. You. Very good job. Jake, where are we on time? I don't I didn't look at the time. 25 minutes almost up. Okay. Alright guys, take about five more minutes. Five more minutes to get those heavy snatches in. That was not bad. Not bad at all. You have a typical like taller person pull off the ground though. So usually people who are a little bit taller, their butt shoots up right off of the ground because you're thinking, oh, I gotta get my knees out of the way, right? So your butt comes up and when your butt comes up, we lose all of our leg drive, okay. right? So I wanna think about the bar, my butt and my shoulders, they're all moving together off of the floor, right? So the bar, my butt and my shoulders are all moving together off of the ground. I don't want to see just my butt come up. So see how now this is down. So now my body's like, holy crap, what am I supposed to do with this? And then it just all goes to shit, right? So we got to use our legs off the ground. We got to have everything working together off the ground. And then you got to just jump like hell. As soon as you get to mid thigh, you jump hard. Okay, try it again. That doesn't mean you have to move slower. Just be more structurally sound. Everything together. Go! That was so much better. Holy crap. Wow. That was awesome. No way! Oh my gosh, that's exciting! 
Good job. And one thing that will help too is if you start with your butt a little bit higher, it's gonna be easier to keep that position. Sometimes when you're a taller athlete and you start with your butt down, this doesn't feel like it's easy to stay over the bar. So that's why we end up doing this because we wanna feel ourselves stay over. But if I start over a little bit, I have a greater tendency of staying over it a little bit. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, Thank good you. job, dude. Thank you. I missed it. I missed it. Oh, what happened? Yes. What did yes. he do? Was it because Ron was standing right in front of you? Oh, Ron's amazing. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you are being a good friend. Yeah. He's like, out. adjust this, twist this, drop, fast drop. Okay, but don't drop. Don't ever. Drop. Never, ever, ever do you want to drop. Who could tell me why? This is a really hard question. I always need a fast drop punch. I know. It's wrong. No good? Okay. You can punch, but something needs to happen before you punch. If I just jump, Okay. I need like a massive extension. You get a pull, right? Pull, yes. Okay. But pull where? Do you think I'm going to be able to pull the bar up once pull it gets under it. exactly? Around the bar. There you go. Exactly. Around the bar. So when you jump, right? That's what's creating all of that elevation moving up on the bar. If I just drop when that happens, what's going to happen? The bar is going to come down on me. I have no idea where it is in space. But if I jump it up, and as soon as it's reached its maximum point of elevation, it doesn't want to move up anymore, I get to use that bar to pull myself into position. That's where that punch comes into play, okay. right? But if I don't use the bar, the bar is going to beat me down every time. And if I drop, I'm going to be so soft when I try to catch it. So I'm gonna jump and then I'm gonna pull, 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 pull until I can't pull anymore and then I'm gonna punch into my receive. Okay? okay? okay. So let me see it. Let okay. me see you do that. Come on, you got this. Jump up. Holy cow. <laughs> To be able to do that right after I just explained that was incredible because I that's a you. very hard concept to do. That was so good, Bob. And did you see how strong he was in that receive? Because you were ready for it. That was awesome. You was do the lift or you're going to beat me with it. 100%. <laughs> I was going to beat you with that belt right there. Great job. Thank you. Thank great you, job. Appreciate that was it. great. Right, All right. All right, guys, take about one more lift and then we're going to go to clean and jerk. Woo! That was awesome. Yes. So why do you think I can do a really good one and people see, but when I switch over the weight, it sucks? Well, first of all, it's that verbiage that doesn't help, right? So we want to get out of that verbiage of as soon as I go to the bar, I just suck at it, right? It's different. The PVC pipe is gonna feel different from that barbell. But if you just keep drilling the movement and drilling the positions with PVC pipe, you can trust your positions and your drills once you go to the barbell. You just need more repetitions in with the PVC pipe. How new are you to the sport of weightlifting? A year. So, so new to it, right? We need thousands and thousands of repetitions. And you need to keep drilling that overhead squat. I mean, even in just that two minutes, your overhead squat already improved. So now we get all those repetitions in, so that way when you go to the bar and it feels just a little bit different, you can tell your body, hey, we've done this with the PVC pipe over and over and over, we can do it with the barbell too. But that's very normal. My dad used to tell me, oh my gosh, I put a freaking fly on the bar and your movement totally changes. It's going to change when you put more weight in your hands. And that's okay. We just got to keep getting repetitions in. Okay? You're welcome. All right, guys, come up to the board really quick. Uh, right when you got to the bottom, your eyes dropped and it made everything shift forward. Keep your eyes straight ahead so that your chest stays up and so you stay balanced on your feet. Okay? How is snatching? Okay. 
So people usually hate the snatch, but they love the clean and jerk. So for this clean and jerk, our complex that we're gonna start off with is some muscle cleans. This is gonna help for those of you that have a really slow turnover. How many of you guys feel like you could get the bar up, but then it crashes on you when you go and receive your clean? If that's you, we need to drill muscle cleans. We need to strengthen from here to here, pulling intentionally all the way until those elbows come around. It can't just be a jump and a catching of the weight. I need to keep pulling all the way until my elbows come all the way around. So that's what we're gonna practice on these muscle cleans. And then we're gonna go into tall cleans. Tall cleans are really great for feeling you pull your body down and around the bar. Okay, again, we talk about the act of jumping and dropping and catching. It's way more evident on a clean. You're never dropping and catching. You're shrugging and you're pulling into position. It's this very aggressive tension on the bar all the way until I'm into position. So we're gonna practice pulling to where that barbell is in space. So we're gonna go to a two inch squat, and then a four inch squat and then a six inch squat. So what that's gonna look like is I'm gonna get as tall as I can and then I'm gonna shrug into a two inch squat. Stand, bring it down, get as tall as I can, shrug into a four inch. Get as tall as I can, shrug all the way to parallel, okay? And then I forgot to add all the way down. So you're gonna do four of those. You're gonna do all the way down into your full clean. Once you do that, you're gonna get that bar into your hands. And we're gonna do a full grip front squat. That's gonna help kind of loosen up those lats, loosen up those pecs, get that upper back working as you go into your front squat. Once you do three of those, you're gonna go ahead, get that bar into your hands, elbows down and out, and a split jerk, okay? And you're gonna hold this split jerk, and you're gonna do three presses. That's gonna help work your balance in your split position. If I'm here with my front knee, super far forward and my back leg super straight, do you think I'm gonna be able to press super strong from this position? No. So I wanna find my balance point and if I'm in a good position, I'm gonna be able to press strong from that position. And then I recover with my front foot first. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. So we're gonna do three sets of that. Again, this is super light. Three sets of that. Once you're done with that, we're going full send on clean and jerk. 110%, okay, for the day. Any questions? 25 minutes again. Okay, so let's go to like one o'clock. Let's do it. Ready, break. How's it going over here, girls? Are we feeling good about things? Are we feeling bad about things? Here, why? Oh, you do? Shucks. Okay, good, that's very hard to do. I know, especially in this kind of environment. You just wanna like get in there. I know. All right, let's see it. So let's move your grip out and slow down that pull from the ground. I want to see all those good positions, okay? Eyes here? Good. Better. Good. Nice and easy. Good. Yes, that was your best one. Good. All right, tall, clean. So come down here, get nice and tall, shrug under. Good. Receive it in a balanced position. 
Yeah, better. Go to parallel. Nice. And then all the way down. So keep your, sorry, do one more. Keep your shoulders down because I want the very first movement to be that shrug. Yeah. So kind of just raise your chest, like high chest. Yeah, now shrug around. That's okay. Just make it a little more fluid next time. All right, full grip, front squat. Move your feet out a little for me. Right there. Good. All right, jerk. Yeah, I want wider grip still. You have longer arms. It's just gonna make it, a, like the bar won't have to travel as far if you go a little bit wider. Yeah. All right, stay there. Bend that back knee a little bit because we wanna feel like all the weight sitting here on your hip. Okay. When your back leg is straight, you yeah. were a little heavy here. So if I bend it, now it sits here and that's gonna be way stronger. Okay, go ahead, press from there. Yeah, good girl. Front foot first when you recover. Perfect. Beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Hi. Hi. The first one, do we start from the ground? Yes. You have like the most perfect teeth I've ever seen in my life. No, they are literally perfect. Oh my gosh. No, they're great. All right, let's see it, girl. Okay, stop. Let your shins come forward just a little bit. Yeah, butt down, chest up. That a girl. Now you can use your legs, okay? All right, push. That's okay. Release that hook grip when you turn it over, okay? Get that big toe on the ground. Don't shift to the outside of the feet. There, slow. Good. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Toe on the ground. Yeah. Slow. Good. All right. Bring it down to the hips. Get nice high chest. Shrug around. Oh, so land in a two inch squat. So this is a tall clean now where we're practicing our pull under. Good. Let's go four inches. Better. Think, so if you ever hit yourself in the chest, it's usually because you're trying to pull straight down. I want you shrugging around, right? So we have to get out of the way of the bar in order to come back to a good position. If I just come straight down, I'm gonna hit, and then I'm probably gonna be a little bit forward in my receive. So get out of the way and then come to the bar when you turn it over, okay? Go to parallel now. That was so much better. Now do a full one, just like that. Yes, good. All right, so now open up those elbows, perfect. Yep, jerk, split jerk. Good, stack a little bit stronger overhead. Stack, stop. See what I'm talking about? So now let's try to get the bar, tighten up your wrist for me. Yes, the bar stacked over your shoulders, stacked over your hips. So bend your back leg a little bit more, open up that chest, there. Now you're in a much more stacked position. And recover, front foot first. So you're here, so your, back, your wrists are super far back, the bar is forward, and this is what your position looks like. Does that look like I'm supporting the bar? No, right? So I gotta get my body under that bar. This, I barely have to do any work at all. I could just sit here all day because I'm structurally sound. So don't do this and that with your wrists. Tighten everything up, okay? Come on. Jump and punch. Find it, find your balance, shift. Okay, Stay. do it again. Stay in your split. Stay. Find your balance and then I want you to press. So press three times for me. Strict press. Bend the back leg a little bit more. This back foot, drop your foot a little bit. There. 
Perfect. Feel how much better that feels and recover. Good. So I think sometimes too, if I'm too like this and I'm pushing too far forward on my back foot, it drives everything forward. But if I kind of just relax my back foot a little bit, it sits me into a better position, okay? Good job. Okay, this is gonna be really good to get because this is a problem that I see a lot with people. So right off of the ground, because you're shorter and have shorter legs, people tend to like to start in this really squatty position, right? So your butt's a little bit lower. That's probably fine for your build, but what I don't wanna see is this. Okay, so your knees are driving out and you're getting the knees out of the way by doing this. And now I'm just directly above the bar when I wanna be here. I wanna have my legs under me and I wanna have my shoulders in front of the bar. I want this like slight angle of my arms as opposed to being like this. Because if I'm like this, I'm fully loaded in my quads and I have no tension or loading in my hamstrings. So I want to load my hamstrings by being over the bar and having my shoulders in front of the bar. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so let's do a really slow deadlift to right above the knee. Okay. Just a normal deadlift? Yeah. And so start, so stand up really quick. Start a little bit farther back from the bar. Perfect. Not that far, actually. Right there. Yeah. Now your shins can come forward to the bar, OK? okay. Good. Stop. See how already you're wanting yes. to sit all the way? Yes, exactly. Okay. Look, your legs are so freaking strong, Jen. Keep them under you. Okay. OK, now push to above the knee. Push straight down. So much better. Good, now feel tension here. Mm -hmm. Make your midline work a little bit more because if I sit back and down, mm -hmm. this is the only thing that has to work. But if I kind of hover over the bar, now this has to work along with my legs. Okay, okay now push straight down and come up to mid thigh. Oh. Good, still stay oh. over, good. Now you can muscle clean from there. Drive, just drive, go. Yeah. Good, do it again. So you're gonna go above the knee, mid thigh, muscle clean. Good, above the knee. Yes, mid thigh, stay over. Yes, now drive. Oh, that was so much better. Yes, and now you're gonna kill me because I've told you to hook grip, but I want you to release the hook grip when you turn it over. Okay, okay do one more. So keep those feet flat, good, legs under you, yes. Stay over, load here too, make this work. Stay over to mid thigh, good. Feel pushing through here, pushing through, yes. And now drive, exactly. So basically what I tell myself is keep the tension as long as possible, okay. right? So if I'm staying over, I'm keeping the tension, keeping the tension, keeping the tension, 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 until I literally can't keep it anymore and then now I can release it in order to explode. But if I come up like this and then I start doing this, I've already released the tension. So now when I go to jump, it's not going to be as explosive. Okay? Good job, girl. How's it going over here, Megan? Yeah? Can I see it? Let's are, let's do clean. Are you guys on the clean and jerks now? Yeah. yeah, let's do some clean and jerks. Okay. Let's do this. Yeah. Let's move your grip out. Oh, okay. Yep. Good. Good. Ooh, you have really good footwork on the jerk. Very good. Bring it down. Really? Wow, that jerk was awesome. The only thing I would change is you stood up from your clean and then you went right into your jerk. I need to see this adjustment of my elbows going from being up to being down and out. If I'm down and out, what happens is I'm setting myself up to be in this position where I can actually punch down into my receive. Whereas if I start like this, 
When I go to drive it up, does that look like a strong position to punch from? No, it's not at all. So I want to set myself into a position that when I'm done using my legs, my arms are perfectly positioned to be able to punch into my split. Exactly, because you're trying to punch like this, and so we're gonna punch it out in front of us. So get here, and I, so just without the bar, here, now you're like opening up everything here, okay. and this is engaging, so now your whole body can be way more explosive as opposed to being here. Now I'm closed, now I'm probably pretty okay. front loaded, and then I'm gonna end up pushing it out in front of me. Okay, okay so let's try it again. Beautiful, now, sorry, that was so good. Just relax your hands, yes. Oh, I love that. That was so good. Thank you. Absolutely beautiful. Good job. Hey, girls. What's up over here? Body's on fire. I know. <laughs> Are you guys on clean and jerks now? Yes. Okay. Okay. I know that complex is pretty deep. It was, it was a lot. I know, I know. All right, girlfriend. Oh, you know I will. Good. That was really good. I think you have the same problem as me off of the ground. We're gonna have to get it moving faster, right? So especially when it's heavy, I like getting it faster off of the ground so that I feel like it's almost cheating the system and I have more momentum on it to help me out of the squat. The key to doing that is pushing your feet through the floor. So that's how we're creating all the explosiveness and speed. I can't just go. The stimulus has to be like loading my legs and driving the floor away from me. And I know that I don't do that whenever this happens. So right off of the ground, if my knees ever cave, it's because I'm loaded through my back and I'm not using my legs to push from the floor. Exactly. And I saw that on your 185 snatch too. If you can just, it's like almost powering your legs up right from the start so that they're ready to jump when it's time to drive. You know what I mean? All right. Move your grip out, Ellie. More? Just a little bit, yeah. Does that hurt your uh, shoulders when you turn it over? I feel like I'm in China right now. <laughs> I, I know. know. I'm not sure. Let me, let's see. Release your hook grip. Do it one more time. Yeah. Starting with my hook grip, releasing my hook grip. Yes, exactly. Good. Now get it back into your hands before you jerk it. Okay, so if we turn it over and it's back on our fingertips, your rack position was actually really good, but you don't have much surface area to drive from when the bar is in your fingertips. So get it into your hands a little bit more, so that way when you go to punch, you're literally punching with like your whole hand as opposed to punching off the fingertips. Actually, I haven't tried a wider rip in a long time. I know, I like, like it. It actually felt really good. I like it. It felt like, that's the first time because again, you think I did it from a mobility thing and I haven't tried it since. I know. Like Honestly, that's like the number one fix that we use on a clean but is why? move your grip out. So basically what it does, it does a couple of different things. The first one being with a slightly wider grip, the contact point is gonna be a little bit higher. Right, so that's what sucks about the clean is that it contacts on the thigh as opposed to the hips. So it makes it easier for you to end up being like this or bumping it out. Yeah. So a little bit wider grip gets it a little bit higher, which makes a more vertical drive. It makes such a... Finishing your pull without even knowing... Yes, 
and the turnover is faster. I like that one way better. Good. Try to... Exactly. So you know how you were saying like, oh, do I need to warm up my glutes and stuff? So basically, what you're doing is you're trying to now use your glutes and your legs when you're lifting off the ground. We always think that it's just on the receive and on the squat, but it's right from the ground. Also, on your, your jerk, on the dip, I know it's really light right now, but I want it to be just a little bit more, not tense, but a little bit, a little bit more tension so that it's not like this kind of lazy right, right. movement, but like, I, used to that, but I know. I'm like, oh, I gotta clean it, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like I did the clean so I can jerk it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. Lip, tiny bit wider. So like you could probably go a, like even a little bit more. Right there, that's where I would put you. How do I find it? Let's say thumb and a half. TBD. Yeah, I like that, Ellie. Now get it into your hands a little bit more. That's the part that I don't know. Does how that hurt, hurt or it does it? Hurt. I just, it's far away from where you were. I don't know that I can. I'll tell you why in a second. Just yeah, jerk it. Not. Yep. Not pain, just tight. I know. Good. So, that's very common and it's a good thing. Right? So, if you're ever comfortable in your rack position, you're probably in the wrong position. So, when I'm in my rack position, it's such a locked and loaded position that my lat literally cramps. That's true. That's very active. Right? So, if I'm here, and it's more in my hands. See how that naturally pulls my body underneath me yeah. as opposed to this, yeah. right? So now I'm forward. Now I've lost all of this structure. If I'm here, now everything's under me and it's way more explosive when I go to drive. So it should not be comfortable. It's like the same concept for overhead squatting. If I'm here, nothing's underneath me. It probably feels more comfortable, but if I'm here, it's not as comfortable, but now my body's completely underneath me supporting the weight, okay? Actually, the bar pad feels really good that way. Exactly, yeah. Surprisingly so. All right, drive your feet against the ground. Into the floor. Push. Yes, good. Squeeze. Oh, I love that one. Oh, so much better. Good girl. Luke, drive your front foot through more than you drive your back foot back. Okay. <laughs> nice. I'd like to see a little bit more shrug around, just like one more inch of around and through because it's a little up and straight down and I'm missing that around, yeah. Hey, one, one more time, what were you saying about the feet? So you did this instead of this. I got to drive your front foot through instead of your back foot back. That was super interesting dip. Did you like come up onto your toes before you dipped? Sure. He does that when he squats. That was really interesting. Do you think that you could move your grip out a tiny bit in between your clean to your jerk? Or does it pinch your shoulder? Uh, we just had this. Hey, tell her what So we just had, yeah, we just had a talk about it. When I clean if I'm real narrow, I'm way stronger. Like, I can't go wider. That's straight. okay. And then, so I'm just now practicing jumping my hands out because I've I noticed I'm stronger here. But my jerk, I have a little longer arms, so it's a little better. I get a little wider. Yeah, because you're here, 
And I'm wondering if you just widened it a little bit, if you'll end up a little bit more stacked. My, uh, I mean, my snatch overhead position is much better than my clean, so probably. I think a wider grip would help if it doesn't pinch your shoulder at all, because sometimes... This is harder for my shoulder than this. Exactly. So let's try. It's good. It's, it's very, it takes practice yeah. learning how to Where pop to it up. up. Yeah. Isn't it hard for me to get Up, 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 up. So that was catching the bar. You jumped and you tried to catch the bar. After you jump, you're pulling, you're pulling into position. What's your position? What's the position you're pulling into? After you jump, what's the position I'm pulling into? A front squat, right? So. <laughs> Okay, so pull yourself into where you front squat. Shrug around. Go. There you go. Nice. Are you guys going up? Nope. You're done? Doing no belt. Fall. All over fall, no belt. Good. Yeah, you need to make your midline work a little more on your jerk though, right? So it's, it's easy to like let yeah. that happen. Don't let the bar come down on you. Reach up on it. Go. Way better. Good. Get your air. Yeah. Ooh, I love that one. So you finished your drive too, and then you drove through. That was way more stable in your receive. That was awesome. You do so much front squatting, you know you can trust that position, right? So with the clean, don't try to make your clean feel different than your front squat. We front squat you a lot for a reason. So pull into that position because you're strong there yeah, and you can that's trust it. Think about because I have an issue sometimes when it's heavier, the starfish a little bit. Exactly. Even into a squat, which. And so, and tell yourself that when you're, when you're getting ready to go, visualize where you front squat from and tell your body that's where we're going to or else you're going to starfish and that's not as strong. Your body doesn't know how to get out of the position from there. All right, let's go. Go. Drive. There you go. Breathe. Be ready for it sooner. You got to be ready for it sooner, okay. right? So I think about being ready for it before I get into position. Because okay. right now you're getting to that position and you're already soft. So you got to be ready for it sooner so that your body's nice and strong to receive it. But I liked that adjustment. That looks way better. Come on. Go. That was way better, Rich. Come on. Up. Yeah. That's just like a lat engagement. When you're engaged through here, it makes this feel stronger. When I lose it through here, everything kind of comes down. Yeah, my pull, I had that issue last year with my back. My pull is just finally now coming back. Yeah. I think it's just the awareness. And Absolutely. I just feel so good. And that's okay. I know, I really like that. On the deadlifts, we just yesterday based it off of a one rep max deadlift without a belt. Without a belt, perfect. It teaches your, your midline how to fire, right? Are you done? Okay. I don't know what time it is. All right, guys, wrap it up if you want to hit one more. Loved that one. You loved it? Yes, I did love it, even though you missed it because you freaking attacked that bar. You are so explosive. Now you just need to like get into your body a little bit more on your receiving positions. Right? So usually when someone's really fast and explosive, their feet are kind of all over the place. 
Use your feet to re-stabilize you because you are super fast. You have to ground yourself again. But keep up that, ten your tenacity was amazing on that lift. You like really went full send. And that was freaking, you gotta be like that. That's the kind of attitude you gotta have. That was so good. Good job. Okay, let's see it. See what you're made of. Come on. Go. Good. Let's go. Get your air. Tight. Oops. <laughs> That's okay. All right, so I think that, and I saw this on your snatches too, I would say the biggest thing that you need to work on is your change of direction. So you spend a lot of time up and then you're kind of falling into your down. The up is a position that you're passing through. So you should be going from the up into the down. I shouldn't be able to see this very distinct vertical extension. Okay, now he's underneath it. I want to see you up and then I want to see you down in a split second. Same thing with your jerk. If you spend too much time up, even a millisecond too long, you're losing your timing of moving with the bar. So I gotta find that exact point when the bar stops moving up and then I start moving down or else when that bar starts moving down again, I'm screwed and that's when I end up pressing out, right? So you gotta practice, I'm up and I'm down. I'm not up and then down. It's just a timing thing. Your positions are great, your technique is great, you just need to work on timing, which is a pretty easy fix for someone who's naturally athletic. Like you know how to move in your body, right? You know how to have good timing. That's all it is with you. Okay, good job, you're welcome. All right guys, good job, you guys can break it down. Well, you tried super hard, Thank so I you. do love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what did you feel on your clean with your feet? It felt too far out. Yeah, so a good question to ask yourself is, could I have squatted from there if I needed to? Yeah. Probably not, nope. right? So we always say that a clean is a missed power clean. So if I miss a power clean, it shouldn't be because I'm out here and it falls forward. I miss a power clean because I couldn't put on the brakes enough and it sent me down into a full squat. So dial in that footwork so that your efficiency is there. And if I'm more efficient, how much more energy do you think you're gonna have for the jerk? A lot more. Exactly, I whereas- was tired, yeah. yeah. right, which is crazy. We do CrossFit, so mm -hmm. we think we have like pretty good stamina, yeah. but you pour everything into that clean and it's not very efficient, you're smoked yeah, yeah. for the jerk. Yeah. So get your efficiency there with the clean so that you have plenty of energy for the jerk. Okay, cool. good job. All right, good job, you guys. Nice work.